This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. All right, guys, I got a good one for you today. This is all about body fat. I'm going to go through and explain how body fat works, how the different types of body fat, how you burn fat, how it's stored, and we're going to unravel some myths and mysteries in um, hopefully help you understand how to maintain a better body composition, which ultimately is our goal as a physique athlete to have a good body composition. Anyway, guys, we're going to dig into it in just one second. All right, so the burning question about body fat, what everybody wants to know, um, you know, <laughs> how does it store it? How do we burn it? Um, you know, so we're going to dig into some of this. Um, so fat is stored in adipocytes, which are fat cells. I don't know what fat cells are. Um, and at the end of the day, losing fat or gaining fat is about net energy balance. It's the law of thermodynamics conservation of energy calories in calories out you know however you want to slice it whatever you want to call it um so we have to burn more calories than we take in to burn fat it's that simple um fat is constantly being stored and being burned um even while we are in a deficit so even while we're on a diet it's not like fat storage gets turned off that's what uh, something that a lot of people do not understand uh so on a diet you know you know periods during the day there's there's fat that's being deposited there's fat that's being taken out think think about it as like like your your bank account um you are constantly depositing money in your bank account and you're taking money out um if you're taking more money out than you're depositing the uh balance of your bank account goes down uh, your fat stores are the same way. So if you are taking out more fat than you're depositing, um, you, your, your net balance of fat, your fat stored decreases. It's no different than your bank account. I think that's probably the simplest way to think about how net energy balance works. Now, there are some things that we can get into, um, you know, how nutrients are partitioned and how we can sort of trick that. It's, you know, fat is one way to store excess energy but there's also glycogen stores so um uh carbohydrates can be stored as glycogen Pro protein can be stored you know basically put, put into muscle tissue um so it's not always and this is why fat is the most likely you know to be stored as as adipose tissue so um the body burns carbs first um excess carbs are then stored um, protein is least likely to be burnt, uh, stored as fat, although it can be stored as fat, but there's several steps it has to go through to be stored as fat. People get upset. I had some dude arguing with me about this before. Um, uh, you know, he didn't want to hear it that, that protein is more difficult to be stored as fat. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's an energy balance. Um, so, and fat, when you're eating carbs, when you're eating protein, any excess fat that you eat uh, really serves no other purpose in the body once you get beyond the essential fatty acids and things that the, that's the body needs from fats, um, you know, uh, cellular repair, uh, vitamin, tr you know, transporting vitamins, things like that. Um, uh, beyond that, in, in, it's, it's very minimal. People, people... People stress out about how much fat they eat, but uh, the average American eats way too much fat, more more fat than what we need for, for basic metabolic purposes. Uh, so that excess fat is, if, especially if you're eating carbohydrates, is going to be stored as fat. Um, and the reason why, you know, you'll hear the keto people say, you know, it converts you into fat burning when you, when you do keto, which is true. Um, your body switches energy sources to burning um, fat primarily, but... Um, once again, it's always net energy balance. So calories in, calories out. We have to take more money out of that bank account than we deposit if we want the balance to go down. It's really that simple. 
Um, you know, so this is why, you know, when I talked about the fats, this is why we need to keep fats low when we're doing a high carbohydrate diet or something like carb cycling, where we're trying to trick the body to store those carbohydrates in the glycogen stores and not in fat stores. Um, the, also the higher your body fat is, the more likely the excess calories that you eat are going to be stored as fat. Um, it does seem to be that way. Um, people, you know, there's the whole P ratio thing. So when you're in a muscle building phase, that's why you need to be somewhat lean before you start into a, a mass phase. You can still gain muscle when your body fat's higher, but it's proportionally a smaller amount of, uh, of um, muscle to fat stored. Um, and also, you know, key, you know, think about it. If you're trying to diet down and you're at 25% uh, body fat versus 15% body fat, to, if you're trying to diet into show shape, you're going to lose 20% body fat versus that person who maintained 15. Um, they're, they're, they're at 10. They only have to lose 10%. So who do you think is going to lose more muscle tissue when they're dieting down for the show? Probably the guy that's at 25% because he's got to, you know, struggle a lot more. Um, he's got to do more extreme things to get his body fat down. So um, if you're going to be a competitor in a physique athlete, you need to stay within striking distance. If you're going to be a powerlifter or a strongman, I, whatever. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter at that point as long as you're maintaining your health. Um, so uh, types of fat. There, there are different types of fat. Uh, we have white fat. White fat is primarily stored energy. It's going to be used as energy. Um, it's almost all lipid, lipid droplets. Um, it does play a role in hormones, uh, estrogen, leptin, um, etc. Um, it has receptors for insulin, sex hormones, norepinephrine, and glucocorticoids. Um, and, you know, we talked about it in my other video with leptin and ghrelin. As fat cells fill up, leptin is released, which signals to your body that you're full you don't want to eat um, that you shouldn't eat in a normal functioning person some people don't have normal functioning leptin and ghrelin um there's there's leptin resistance from being fat for too long um and some people make too much ghrelin uh you know so if you're if your hormones are in balance uh you should make more leptin as your body fat increases thus decreasing your hunger um, same thing with, you know, we talked about that whole P ratio thing before the fatter you are, the more estrogen you make, um, the, you know, so, um, aromatase is, is higher in people who have higher body fat. Um, I have certainly noticed it, um, certainly noticed, noticed it as I, my, um, uh, body fat decreases that when I take testosterone, I don't, my estrogen levels don't go as high. Um, so yes, uh, that, that is a thing. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. Um, it, um, as you get fatter too, insulin resistance seems to increase as well. So that's something else to keep in mind. All right. Next up we have brown fat. Uh, brown fat burns fatty acids to keep your body warm. It, it's full of mitochondria and can burn off white fat. It's actually the good fat. Um, it's abundant in, abundant in newborns and we often call it baby fat um, and it decreases as we age. Um, you know, so, you know, there, from what I understand, a lot of it's around your neck and your, um, your shoulders is where a lot of brown fat is stored. If I recall correctly, somebody can correct me on that if I'm incorrect. Uh, but brown fat is the good fat. All right, so where is fat stored? Uh, subcutaneous fat is the one that we're most familiar with. That's the one as physique athletes, we want to get the fat off that's subcutaneous. That's the fat that sits between the skin and the muscle. And if we want to get that chiseled look, we got to get rid of that fat. Um, you can see here in the diagram, it's mostly healthier fat. It's mostly stored energy. Um, you can see here in the in this uh, diagram that I have where the subcutaneous fat sits between the um, the the top layer of the skin, the dermis, and the mu muscle, um, and then visceral fat, which we're going to talk about next, is below. Um, so visceral fat is stored in the abdomen or in around the organs. It's the most dangerous type of fat. It's the fat that kills. Uh, mostly, you'll see it. Most commonly, you see it in men. Um, and if, and it's, it's the bubble gut fat, I, 
I did a video up about it if you want to search it up what causes the bubble gut and it's everybody thinks it's GH and insulin and I I disagree with that it, it's it's not GH and insulin it's it's an excess they may contribute to it but it is an excess of storage in most cases an excess storage of uh, visceral fat and what it, what it's from is from guys that have um, have been pounding food pounding carbohydrates and they're insulin um, resistant probably from GH use um, and maybe if they used more insulin and more metformin, they wouldn't have these issues. Um, and, but anyway, it is, uh, it, it, they end up accumulating all of this fat around their organs, uh, primarily in the abdomen. And then they get that swollen belly look. You can see it here between these two guys, uh, we got bodybuilder on the left, um, who has the, uh, the bubble gut, which is from visceral fat, and then we have the beer drinker on the right who has the bubble gut, which is visceral fat. You can see he doesn't have a lot of subcutaneous fat. The guy was actually to pinch on it. There's not much subcutaneous fat there. Um, it is all visceral fat, which is really, really the bad type of fat. It 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 indicates that you are you have some sort of metabolic disease, pro probably insulin resistance, maybe even um, prediabetes or type two diabetes. Um, and I, I speculate that a lot of bodybuilders had that. Uh, you don't see it as much these days as you used to. Um, back in the early 2000s and the late 90s, I don't think guys understood how to manage insulin resistance back then. Um, they also didn't proactively use things like Lantus to um, keep from burning out their uh, beta cells in their pancreas. Uh, they did very little to manage um, insulin resistance and make sure that res resistance and make sure that nutrients were being partitioned correctly. We don't want this. So, um, and this is very difficult to get rid of too. A lot of times it requires extreme dieting. You'll see it in old bodybuilders um, that retire. So um, Dave Palumbo, if you look at him now, he doesn't have that bubble gut anymore. So if it were organs that grew, it wouldn't go away, right? Um, so that tells me that it's likely visceral fat. So visceral fat is something to, that we need to think about. The third type of fat that nobody really thinks about, um, and you know, everybody, most people are familiar with visceral and subcutaneous, is the intramuscular fat. Fat gets stored in the muscle, around the muscle cells. So you can see here, um, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's it is also a fat. A, intramuscular fat is also associated with insulin resistance. So. If your insulin sensitivity is good, you mostly will store fat subcutaneously. Um, and so you can see here, this is a picture of a steak. You can see the intramuscular fat in the steak. This is why I laugh when dudes talk about when you put them on a hard cut and they, they lose weight and they get towards the end of the diet, which usually the subcutaneous fat comes off first um, when you do a hard diet. Visceral fat and intramuscular fat come off later. This is why I laugh when dudes tell me, you know, they've lost muscle at the end of the diet. <laughs> More than likely, they didn't lose muscle. They lost uh, visceral fat and they lost intramuscular fat. Um, you know, think about this steak here. Let's think, let's, let's consider, let's, let's pretend this was a bicep um, and you got rid of all this. This, this goes from a 20 inch bicep down to a 16 inch bicep. You didn't lose any muscle tissue. You just lost fat around the muscle tissue and throughout the muscle tissue. So that is something to keep in mind. And that's why you'll see a lot of guys on their first hard diet, they shrivel up. I speculate that it's the loss of intramuscular fat and uh, visceral fat that's been there forever. Um, and then once you get reset, um, you mostly are storing subcutaneous fat at that point, if you maintain insulin sensitivity correctly. Um, this is also a reason why I, you know, you see fake strength to, you know, you get power lifters and strongmen that get really, really fat. Um, they may not actually have more contractile tissue than a bodybuilder. They probably have less, but all of these things add to leverage. So you have the, certainly adding that subcutaneous, um, uh, or I'm sorry, intramuscular fat there is going to add some leverage that will help them with lifts. Um, you know, and then you, you compound that with, uh, additional water weight to carry from, from, you know, the crappy diets they eat and, and, um, you know, using watery compounds and that's how you create leverage for strength. So it's not actually 
real muscle tissue, you've just you've just created more leverage, which is fine. I mean, that's that's part of the sport. Uh, I'm not belittling power lifters or strongmen in any way, but it's just it's just how it works. Pound for pound, bodybuilders probably have more muscle than anybody, and you'll see it in the gym. Um, you, you diet a, a power lifter down. Sometimes they look good, uh, but a lot of times when you diet a power lifter down, there's not there's not a lot left there. Um, fat burners. So how we burn fat, um, and I wanted to touch on this chemically. How we can leverage chemicals to burn fat. Um, uh, you know, there's many pathways to burn fat here. We have beta agonists, which are clin and ephedra. Um, the body fat, body gives off heat, and the beta agonists upregulate brown fat metabolism, which we talked about before. Um, increases the production um, of brown of 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 the uh, mitochondria in the brown fat. So then, we, if we recall correctly, those are burning off white white fat cells. So. Um, it incre basically increases the engine. Uh, DNP is an uncoupler um, and causes more heat to be given off a of less energy burn. It basically makes the ATP production less efficient. The, the problem with, with, from what I understand from DNP, and somebody can correct me on this if I'm wrong, is that there's um, it, it is sort of unlim it, there's no limit to how, how much thermic uncoupling happens. So it can sort of spiral out of control, and that's why it, it's it's dangerous. Um, L-carnitine facilitates transport of fat into the mitochondria. Uh, Yohimbine blocks the alpha-2 receptors in the fat cells, allowing adrenaline to work longer, and it helps to activate hard-to-reach fat. Um, you, you know, you got that low back fat that you can't get rid of, that lower stomach fat you can't get rid of. Yohimbine might be the key to unlocking that. We have synephrine and caffeine. Um, they liberate fat from the white cells. Um, they um, help help liberate fat from white cells. And then we have T3, which upregulates metabolism in general. The problem with T3 is, is it seems to burn everything. In my experience, it burns <laughs> burns muscle tissue as much as it burns fat. Um, at least in me, um, you know. So that's the issue you run into with T3. I, I think it's okay if you use it in moderation. Um, and then some people that have a lot of fat to lose or stubborn fat or just can't get their metabolisms going, T3 may be necessary. And some, some people like me, I have a fast metabolism. I think it just makes things worse. All right, guys, that's all I got for you on this one. Thank you. Hopefully you found this one enjoyable. If you have questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.